Fresh jumps out to me immediately if they want to set him up here for success in the 2v2. Uh, with the Jace LeBlanc, Akali bans Lissandra, the final ban there from G2 as well. Looks like it might be an AD carry first for the side of Fnatic, but something like the Lucian's still available. The Kaiser is an interesting hover to me. Yeah, Lucian is up and available, and let's not forget the Perks is more than happy to play things like the Callista and Draven, should it be required. So I feel like G2 are more than happy, as they have plenty of answers. Uh, I love the Akali band coming out. We've seen it already earlier in the day. The buffs definitely make her a little bit more of a threat that we saw on 9.5. Uh, and in the hands of Caps, that is a very scary champion. So they do not want to give that one away. Yeah, I mean, it's Fnatic banning away three very explosive, very lane dominant champions. Yet G2 identified there's still a very strong flex pick option available. That, of course, is the rise. We've seen it go top lane, mid lane, all over the place. And it's very successful at securing a solid lane phase and a better lane. And I wonder if they look to put any value on the Jarvan here. Instead, they're just immediately going to lock in the Alistair. So they want to try and get Promise Q on something comfortable. It adds that extra bit of engage. But I feel like for Fnatic, they now have a lot of options. You could just go for the Jarvan and the Cassio right now. Cassio to answer up the rise and Jarvan that can both be flexed between top and jungle as well. Yeah, there's a lot of options here for Fnatic. But I specifically want to touch on that All Star one more time because bringing the engage from the support role makes me feel like like, this Rise could be going top lane here for Wonder, giving him something that can deal a little bit more damage. Lacks in terms of the all-in, but that's why you have the all-star. So we've got those next couple of picks coming in from Fnatic as well. It's the Rakan to match up in the bottom lane. You have the Karthus as well for Broxer, playing it against the guy that really popularized it on the EU scene in the form of Yankos. Broxer's gone 2-0 and oh so far on that Karthus pick. Now, the Karthus is an interesting one to me because when I look at Broxer, the big improvements he's made is his early game pathing and his ability to impact the map and get his lanes and advantage. With the Karthus, it is much less about that idea of having a strong early game and more about securing strong scaling team fight damage, which is what Broxa is now going to be bringing to the But team. never forget, Ender, that when it's Fnatic, they will always find a way to gank bot lane. And when you're running the Karthus, it doesn't matter whether it's a good early game jungler or not. With a Rakan, they'll find a way to set up a play. They did it with the Vayne last week. It would not be surprised to see them make that trip once more. And with Jisoo having not locked in their AD carry, we start to see the bands come towards it. Kalista taken away. Renekton removed by G2 as well towards that top lane. I wonder whether we'll see something like the Ezreal or the Draven removed as well. No, I mean, Wonder plays for G2, mate. He's in the top lane. But in any case, with the Renekton banned away, this to me implies that they are looking for a potential Aurelia up towards the top side, given that she, he is very strong in the early laning phase with the Aatrox focus as well. This just reinforces more and more Aurelia, Aurelia, Aurelia. And remember that it can be flexed towards the bot side of the map as well. They have that triple flex option should they want it. So I wouldn't be surprised if they actually see that lock in now and then Fnatic try to find some kind of answer to it and then it's swip swapped all over the place. I mean, hearing you talk about the flex, flex picks for G2 just reminds me of the start of the split, this team where they could just draft three champions, they could basically go into any roles that they wanted to. Oof, and there, how we forget? with the Cassio. the Cassio being locked in, there's still options because Perks can play that in the bottom lane, Caps can play it in the mid lane. G2 don't have to reveal their, their hand until they lock in their fifth and final pick. A lot of damage coming out from that composition already as well. We talked about how explosive these teams can be. Remember the last time they faced up against each other, it was a 20-minute stomp, the fastest game we have ever had in LEC history. That includes all of EULCS as well. But the gauntlet has been laid down to Whippo in that top lane. It looks like he's going to answer with an Aurelia of his own. Wow. I love this pick so much from Whippo here. There's a lot of confidence to just blind pick the Aurelia. Now, remember, it can still go into the mid lane. You do still have that flex option between top and mid, um, but Given that both Renekton and Aatrox were banned away, G2 basically offered a free channel on the map. And the gangplank map coming out from Whippo, he was also buffed on this patch. Early damage to Kegs, giving him a little bit more damage in the early game, but it's also a very risky champion because he's something that in the past, you could often just dive against very early on. And right now there's a lot of AP damage, but let's see what direction they take this draft now. Yeah, I mean, the gangplank is risky, especially when you- oh! Come on! A 
Okay, okay, throw it all out the window. Get rid of your notes, get rid of your papers. Caps is laying it down against his former team. That's a Zed mid. Oh man, I love it too, because Vettius is saying, wait, there's a lot of AP on this team. You know what brings AD to the mid lane? Not the Oswo, get rid of that. We want the Zed now for Caps. Oh and it's God. up against the Aurelia as well. This is going to be a ridiculous 1v1. But it's, it's actually so good into Fnatic's comp as well, right? Because when you think about it, Rakan, yes, you can offer peel and with his shield and taunt, maybe it can lock the Zed down, but regardless of that, he's really good in the 1v1 against Irelia and Gangplank in a side lane. He's only gonna get stronger as the game progresses. And if you ever try to force a two versus two, Jarvan Zed against Karthus Irelia heavily goes in the favor of G2 Esports. It absolutely does. And if you look at the side Fnatic, you want reliable crowd control to shut down this Zed pick, and that is just not here for them. All they have in terms of immediate CC is going to be that Rakan ultimate, and if you're using that just to lock up a Zed, well, you're missing out so much in the team fight. I think Caps is gonna have a field day here. And I think what I love so much about this draft from G2 is it's almost like you're actually seeing G2 in full power. Perks locking in a mid lane, Cassio as well, one of his most well-known champions, and Caps on the Zed. I feel like you could not be more unlocked than what you've got for yourself right now. We've got a hectic game ahead of us, guys. We've got a Zed, we've got a Cassio, we've got an Aurelia. Let's just take a breath, let's take a moment. Let's soak in the history that is this game. These teams have met 33 times before. 18-15 in favor of G2. Fnatic have won nine of the last 11 games they played against each other, and Fnatic are the team on the rise. They're the team that still needs to secure their spot in playoffs. They're the team still fighting to make it to Rotterdam. G2 are there, and they are trying to slam that door in the face of Fnatic. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for Fnatic versus G2. The crowd is amped. There are a lot of Fnatic fans. The fans at home voted for Fnatic. They expect them to be winning this game. And how can you not? Fnatic, they've had a miraculous comeback in the second half of the split. Six one games in their last six games. G2 are slumping. But when it comes to Fnatic, they are their bitter rivals and they will not back down. No, they absolutely will not. And I mean, as we actually dive in towards this game, we have to start looking at these matchups. And I see already Reckless started with the E here on the Lucian. He hopped over this wall that's going to buy room for Hillisang to walk on in. And if Perk steps too close to this bush, it could be trouble. Definitely could. He's going to hug the wall, though, slither his way down towards the bottom side. Fnatic won't find anything out of it. Looks like Brox and Whipper might try for a bit of invade here, though. Straight on to Yankos. Force that Jarvan back. He's already tanking it up. Now he's stepping to the bush. He doesn't know. Now he realizes that they're there. Broxa and Whipper will force him away. Lay waste landing. But Broxa immediately says, OK, I want the red. I want to secure this for myself. Yeah, and you'll see Yankos has to walk immediately out of this side of the jungle because you actually cannot fight against the Karthus level 1 damage. Now Brox is going to get to take the Raptors as well. And I wonder if he just immediately passed towards the bottom side of his own jungle because right now the only only answer for Yankos is to go from blue buff towards the Fnatic red and try to trade. And Broxa could easily shut that down just by moving. But I think it's really risky to try do that as well because they don't have pressure in the bot lane right now. Cassio at early levels is very punishable. And you can already see that Hellasang moved up towards the river to drop these wards. And they have full information on what Yankos is up to. So trying to secure this would be risky. Oh. Yankos didn't have the smite. Flawless Duo is going to land from Nemesis, but Nemesis unable to get the Scuttle Crab with the Blade Search. And now this is actually really rough here for Yankos, because not only is he going to be denied in the experience department, but also Fnatic just know exactly where this early game champion is on the map. You know he now only has three camps available, the Wolves, the Gromp. He's probably going to be on that side of the map for quite a while, at the very least. And it's going to allow Fnatic's players to play very forward in their lanes, to play aggressively and try to build up an advantage. You can see the bottom lane, actually. Reckless already building up a bit of an advantage for himself. 17 farm to 9. Up. There is a wave pushing in here for Perks, but only four more minions there for him. So gonna be a little bit of a lead. Top side wonders ahead as well with about an eight farm uh, advantage over Whippo on this gangplank. Yeah, so this is all well and good, but we've got to talk about Zed versus Aurelia now. Like <laughs> the most important matchup <laughs> okay. in the game. <laughs> Hit me uh, with your knowledge bombs. So Pettius. I'm a massive fan of this matchup because it is very skill intensive. The important thing to remember is that once level six is hit, is when things really start to get spicy. Uh, the thing about Zed is in the early laning phase, he can farm relatively safe 
safely, but it's Aurelia that typically has the pressure because of all the extra damage you get on your passive. Uh, and she also has the Q to farm a little bit in a safer position. And on top of her stun, that CC means that she'll often win out on these early skirmishes. Now, Proxy is around this mid lane. We do want to just bring your attention, guys. Reckless is on our POV stream. You can see it in your bottom left corner, twitch.tv forward slash Riot Games 2. You can have a look at exactly how he's piloting this Lucian into perks. A matchup for the ages you have to feel with uh, there just being so much history between those two players. There definitely is so much here between Perks and Reckless playing against each other for a very long time. But this matchup in particular is also one that, that interests me a lot because I think when you see actually Perks gets engaged on, gets to take a lot of damage. Flashes away the Ignite down as well. My Asthma comes out, but all they wanted was Perks to summon a spell. Now here's the thing, because I actually think Cassiopeia should have a good chance here. Now, we're gonna have to put that on pause because Yankos is in the mid lane looking for Nemesis. Nemesis has his flash. Yankos, comedy trade is level three versus level five. <laughs> the minion wave is very big as well. Cap's already yeah. harassed down to half eight. HP. And Nemesis, who remember replaced Caps on Fnatic, comes out on top in the early trades. So, yeah, a couple of things to uh, touch on there. First off, going back to the mid lane matchup just very quickly, uh, because of the stun, it means the Caps has to be very careful when approaching the minion wave, because if he ever gets locked up, then the Aurelia is always going to win out on that one. And when he ults the Aurelia as well, remember that his dest his landing point will be defined, because yep. it will always be behind the Aurelia, which means that it's very easy for her to land the stun the moment that he comes out of that. So there are definitely opportunities for the Aurelia to outplay, but the amount of burst damage that the Zed will get as the game progresses means that even after the stun lands, it's very easy for Zed to just land his skill shots and then just obliterate the Aurelia. Yeah, I think the other thing that sort of Caps has going for him in this matchup is that Zed holds a range advantage. When you can actually use your, your shadow to poke with the shurikens from long range, you can also clear away the waves relatively easily. Caps should be able to build up sort of an HP advantage in the 1v1 just by trading offensively with the uh, shadow into shuriken. So Perks backed away, used the teleport to get back into the lane, has a tear first on this Cassiopeia. Sometimes we see him go for the uh, lost, lost chapter. Lost chapter as well. I was going to say finished codex, and I remember that it's actually the lost chapter. Tear doesn't give you as much harass potential in the lane. No, it doesn't. But mana is what's most important for Perks uh, on the Cassio, which means that he's now going to have more spammability of the spells. And you guys will notice that in these early levels, Reckless has heavily dominated, but a lot of that has actually come off the back of Hillisang, um, largely because with Hillisang being able to approach very aggressively in the lane against the Alistair, it becomes difficult for the Cassio Alistair to really do much in the early laning phase. So they're zoned off a lot of farm and they're kind of forced underneath their tower, where it can be rather challenging for Perks to actually keep up in the CS department. Yeah, and while Perks might struggle to CS early on, I think the Cassio plus Alistair combo is absolutely Absolutely deadly because you can use the 100%. miasma to basically guarantee the headbutt pulled. You can't flash away from that. So once level six has come in, especially for Yankos, I'm gonna look for G2 to make Pele's bot side, but right now it's Fnatic that wanna do the same. Looking for the play, the double knocker comes out. Reckless underneath the tower perks the burst the ball. Nemesis gets it. Promise you will follow up shortly after. Now Yankos could come and join this fight, but he's not gonna be able to do it. The tower plates fall in the bottom lane as well, and Fnatic strike first in the match. Brilliantly set up there from Fnatic as the crowd goes wild. They're gonna pick up two turns plates off the back of that as well as Reckless jumps out to an 800 gold lead over Perks. It was such a massive wave and Perks needed to get that farm. His flash was down and he just Everything that was in front of him, he needed, but Fnatic set that play up beautifully, as you said, Ender. They had priority in mid, they had control over the river, and there was no flash available on perks. All of the ingredients were there to allow them to get the play, and Fnatic find themselves with two early kills. Oh yeah, perks had just also used his teleport to get back to lane relatively shortly before that as well, so there's no chance for him to make up in CS as Wonder. Whippo, so what? Wonder just takes him out. I mean, Wonder's had his number the entire time, but Whippo couldn't get away. Here comes the Requiem, it's him up. Box up presses R, gets his second kill of the game. So it ends up being a one for one overall, but that solo kill is still a big deal for Wonder up in the top lane. Remember that Fnatic, they voluntarily picked the Gangplank. There was the flexibility option, but have a look at this. You can see that Zed and Jarvan, they couldn't get towards the bot side of the map fast enough. The double knockup coming in from Hillisang was beautifully set. Oh, Caps caught out. Hillisang ignited 
Is he gonna take away? No! Nemesis once again teams up with his support and gets another kill for Fnatic. Yeah, and Attila saying actually finding all of these plays because it was in the bottom lane where he burned the flash off perks, then found the, the flash W engage underneath the tower, and with a good roam into the mid lane as well, Fnatic are out to a pretty sizable lead. And the one that we had coming into pick and ban was could people could G2 shut down the Fnatic early game? Could they play at the same tempo as Fnatic in the early game? And I think plays like this show that it's just not happening for G2. Oh, so. Caps is going back here. I think he's sitting in the shop thinking that he's safe. He doesn't have his shadow available, remember. Then at level one, it's got an 18 or oh, 22 second cooldown, I even think. It's ridiculously high. So that wasn't up and available. And if he'd had it, he probably could have been able to kill Hillisang. But the moment that Nemesis joins the fray and that Hillisang buys enough time, it ends up being an easy kill. So that's a really big deal as Fnatic extends to a 2,000 gold lead in this early game. And now as we sort of look to the side of G2, because they're down 2,000 gold, but and yet they're the ones with like sort of the proactive early game champions. You have a Jarvan in the jungle here for Yankos that's been unable to sort of impact this map. You have the Cassio all -Star down bottom lane to try and set up for that. I, I really feel like we need to start seeing G2 combat against Fnatic in this early game because right now Fnatic are sort of having their way with G2. What I will say though is that while we are very early in the game as Fnatic look to set up another potential dive towards the bot side of the map, um, I do feel G2 have the scaling advantage. I feel that as the game progresses, Ryze in a side lane should be able to hold his own against both the Gangplank and the Aurelia. And Zed, as we talked about in the draft, also does very well in those 1v1s. So assuming G2 can split up the map, I think they're in a great position. But the problem they're going to find is that Fnatic are very good at converting their early leads into team fights later on. And with the Gangplank, Aurelia, and Karthus in those 4v4s, 5v5s, that is a very strong composition. And G2 might not be able to split them up. Exactly, because I would agree with you that G2 do have the scaling advantage advantage in the 5v5, but to me it's more about their front line in that front to back because you have the All-Star plus the Jarvan, you have a lot more tools to try and soak up damage, whereas when I look at Fnatic's side, they actually have five very squishy champions, so yes, they're going to perform very well in these smaller skirmishes, but in the straight up front to back team fight, that's where it might be a little bit more difficult to find the proper setup. So now we see Fnatic starting up the Cloud Drake, they should be able to score this one pretty easy peasy while Perks continues to fall at a deficit down towards the bottom lane. 40 CS is the difference there. I mean, there's 40 CS in the bottom lane, as you say, as Rectus gets the advantage and the, the Dragon goes down, but you have to look up towards the top lane if you're on the side of G2. You've got a 35 CS lead. You've already solo killed Whippo as Wonder, and this was a matchup they talked about on the analyst desk saying this could be a pivotal matchup for how this game plays out. Yeah, it absolutely is, because if you look at what's been sort of going on recently, Wonder actually is topping the charge in most of these categories in terms of the laning phase, and now he's calling up Caps here. They want to dive on towards Whipple, and there's no one around from Fnatic. Cannabarage used by Whipple to clear out the wave. Caps just gonna clear that control ward. Knows that he doesn't really want to go for the full-on dive when Whipple still has his flash available, and so instead we'll go back towards mid, which Nemesis has pushed out. Yankos was maybe looking for a gank in this middle lane, but it's not going to happen. Now, actually moving back towards that top side, I, I think it's really interesting, not just looking at the players in, in this matchup, but actually the champions. It's Whipple on a self counterfeit gangplank up against the Rise. Wonder's going to teleport in because he wants to take an aggressive trade with the rest of G2 oh. on the prowl looking for the dive. All of G2 on their way. The tower's still pretty tanky. Whippo still has the flash. Dead, no ultimate. But Karthus is here as well, actually. Yeah, could have been a strong counter gank there. G2 respect the fact that Broxer is nearby, still has the Ultimus as well. So uh, what I found really interesting was we heard the analyst desk talking a lot about the top lane matchup, but uh, I felt coming into this game, the jungle matchup would actually be one of the most pivotal because something Ender you were saying before we even came into the game was, ooh, caps. Nemesis with a great long range stun there from the floor. Stuart promised you coming in as well, knocked up straight away, charmed up as well, we'll pop the ultimate. Oh, dodges away from the Vanguard's edge. On a knife edge for Promise Q. Requiem is waiting for the ultimate to time out. That's a kill. Another one back to the fountain. And it's perfect that Broxer just picks up the kill as I'm about to talk about him because it is this guy that has made the early game so much better for Fnatic. You talked about it in the draft as well. You talked about it earlier on, Ender. But overall, this guy's early game impact is really what has changed the game for Fnatic. And he's actually where the, the gold difference is coming from. It is, he's like a 1.5k gold ahead of Yankos right now. And 
he is getting so strong so quickly, only 12 and a half minutes in. Oh yeah, I mean, he's absolutely smashing. And honestly, this player went from maybe the eighth best jungler in the league in the first half because he was underperforming yep. to one of, if not the best here, because he's actually just showing up Yankos in this match. You look at how he's been able to impact early games. This game, maybe not quite as much on the Karthus. He's picking up some kills with the ultimate, but you look at level two tower dives on the Nocturne as Broxa here. He has completely leveled up his game. And it's like fighting here. The Deathmark comes out onto him. The Guardian will keep him alive just for the moment. Deathmark still proc. Not enough damage from the Kalei from Reckless. Straight onto Caps. Caps dodges back. Can he dodge away from his former teammates? Hinnasang still has the chase, has the flash. Jump straight in. Oh. Hinnasang. Good night, sweet prince. You can change teams, but the result is still the same. And Caps tries to go for a 2v1 outplay. Cannot pull it off. And now there's more action up towards the top side. Whipper flashes away. Cassiopeia and Perks on the way up here as well. Promise you not going to go for the full in dive as Whippo just retreats behind the tower. Let's just take a minute to appreciate, this is the third time G2 have sent three or more members towards the top side to try and get a kill onto Whippo. He has not been caught out a single time. It is just the Herald there that they can use to trade a turret up top lane, but the rest of Fnatic now have bounties across the board. The entire team is actually just taking these turret plates and building up more and more of a lead. Such an exciting game so far that Fnatic has been in full control of. And the member that I really want to draw attention to is Nemesis as well. Let's not forget the last time these two players met, it was very one-sided in favor of Nemesis. And now Caps on this Zed. He tries to go for the execution onto Hillisang. He reads it too late. He's just trying to help wave clear, but he gets all these shields with his E. I think his passive may have even come back up there as well. I think he's running the Guardian as yeah. well, so he gets that proc off of from the uh, Lucian. And then he just comes in, gets a knockup. Caps can't sidestep. And that's just a very easy kill. Yeah, Hill is saying not going to take any chances there, using the flash to secure the kill on towards Caps. And Fnatic, they're not slowing down at all. They sort of saw G2 as the other early game focused team in the league and said, you know what, we're just going to beat you at your own game. They're now with a 3,000 gold lead. Once again, Whippo looking to be dove under the tower. Camabrosh comes out. There's the death mark used by Caps straight away. Whippo, not many places for him to go up and back underneath his last tower. Caps jumps back and Whippo's still alive here. Caps couldn't go behind the tower. Nemesis actually has a great flank position off here. Perks chased out by Hillisang. Lands the pet fine gaze. Hillisang's gonna be tanking up the tower. A couple of shots comes out. Reckless on his way in though. Perks flashes away. There's my asthma. Reckless can just chase them down. The Requiem will definitely be enough. Goodbye to Perks and Caps now. Dodging around as much as you can, but your fancy feet might not save you for too long. Nemesis jumps in. The Ignite ticks away. And Fnatic are eight kills to one up. 15 minutes into this game, they are dismantling G2. Fnatic are absolutely smashed in this game and remember it last time it was G2 with the fastest game in LEC history up against Fnatic now it's Fnatic doing the exact same thing to G2 it last is. time they met Fnatic didn't get a tower they only got four kills at 15 minutes they were 8,000 gold behind this time Fnatic show why they are continuing their march up the standings in the LEC and it is across the board there are advantages except for Bwipo the poor man up in the top lane he's had a great second half of the split but he's also one of the players that often gets left behind but even still he's offering value he's not falling too far behind you can see in a two versus one he ends up walking away with his life he dodges all of the shurikens he also uses the w the oranges to keep himself alive and he's able to dodge away and while all this is happening hillisang looks for an opportunity onto perks he feels that he can go for this play but then reckless just dives in saying you know what Go back to mid lane, my friend, because you cannot compete with me as the Requiem ends up securing that kill and Caps, he ends up falling. Oh my god, that's the thing though, is the Requiem cancelled the recall from Caps. I think Caps was going to get out Scott free right there, but no, he can't go back to base and Nemesis is there to secure yet another kill as the cherry on top. Everything coming up in favor of Fnatic. We wondered whether G2 would be able to match him in the early game. They have not been able to do that. G2 maybe have the scaling advantage. They can put the rise, the Z in the side lane, but at this point, you're 5,000 gold ahead as Fnatic. You can 1v1 pretty much anyone on the enemy team. Yeah, all the pressure falls on Wonder's shoulders right now because he's the only one that's even staying relatively close to the rest of Fnatic. He's at 7.1k gold to the 7.3 and 7.2 of Brox and Reckless. He has now completed his Archangel staff and he's looking to in, uh, improve that along with getting a very early needlessly large rod. So he's strong, but there are four other members of Fnatic that are just as strong as he is uh, and they're looking to push 
Smash in the top tier too. Yeah, and notice what Fnaticers are doing, right? They're moving as sort of a four-man roaming squad through this top side of the jungle. Just eliminate turrets off the map. Currently, G2 don't have enough control wards to protect their own jungle, so Fnatic can walk in, deny vision away from G2, and just set up for picks against this team. G2 licking their wounds a little bit. 6,000 gold behind, but they do have Wanda in an okay position in the side lane. They can still maybe find some of those out plays. We've seen Caps pull a rabbit out of a hat time after time sure, in these games. But we've never seen Caps 0-3 at 15 minutes. That's true. Uh, um, except for when he went up against Rookie. And the reality is this guy has tried to make a bunch of plays so far this split. Uh, this split, this game rather. Uh, and he hasn't been able to make them pull off. A couple of poor decisions, like sitting in the shop, getting killed by Hillisang, trying to go for a 2v1 outplay bot lane, uh, has ended up in his demise. And now he is behind on this set as Wanda Ooh, just on the dodging chase. out. Phase rush enough to keep Wanda Such alive. Such a speedy boy. Just runs away from that one. Hillisang not able to lock him down. And G2, what can this team do in this position? Because I, I, I think you sort of nailed it, right? Wonder is the player with gold in the bank right now. He's got the Archangel stacking up. Eventually, he'll finish off the Rabadons or the Spellbinder as well. But then it's only sort of like 1v1 fights that he can take. Because honestly, I think G2 need more time along the oh. rest of them. So we see that replay one more time and how Wonder yep. can just lock up Hillisang right before the Rune prison. Yep. It really, touches. Really good. Well, well, well done from him. Now we can see that G2 isn't completely conceding the map. They've actually got decent vision control over the top side of Fnatic's jungle. They know they can't challenge the next Mountain Drake, so they're not bothering to invest towards the bot side. And you can see that there is a lot of darkness towards the bottom of the map, so capturing a lot of respect towards the enemy. G2 just trying to count their losses where they can. You can see Caps has the double lethality items now with the Dust Blade, with okay. the Yumu's. You've got Trinity Force finished on Nemesis as well. So maybe if Caps finds, just catches out someone, he can burst them down. Two items on Reckless though as well with the Blade of the Ruin King and the Black Cleaver complete. So you're looking at one and a half compared to two items on the side of Fnatic. Yeah, it's a very big difference right now. And honestly, G2 can't fight against Fnatic if they keep moving together as sort of this core four-man unit. Where G2 do have some strength is their ability to isolate individual members with the Jarvan, the Alistar. If they can see a member get too far away from the rest of his team, like Hillisang has done from time to time in the past, that is potentially where G2 can try to fight back and reclaim some territory on this map. And the Baron has just spawned. Uh, Fnatic don't have the best Baron take because they don't really have a front line that can tank it. So I would be surprised if Fnatic made that threat. The one thing you have to be careful of as Fnatic is G2 rushing it down with a Casio and with a Jarvan that's building full tank. They could sneak it from over the wall. Yep. And it's just something you have to keep in the back of your mind. Given the situation that G2's in and the gambles that they're not afraid to take, they will look for that kind of an opportunity. Just as you talked about it, we saw five or six assist me pings come out on the bound from Fnatic, so they knew it was a possibility. Roxa was there to react in time and stops G2 from sneaking anything away. But as we crest the 20 minute mark game, very much in Fnatic's favor. G2 have fought back from worse positions than this though. I remember the Vitality game last week, they were absolutely getting dumpstered and still they were able to hold on to their base, hold on to the game, and fight back. And yet, in that game, we'd already seen, at this point at the 20 minute mark, Vitality making some mistakes. And what it came down to was splitting up members going two, three members off in a side lane trying to get a tower. Now, Fnatic have not made those similar levels of mistakes because, honestly, I think that is where G2 can try to exploit Fnatic. If they were trying to sort of spread their luck too thin and try to take multiple towers in multiple lanes at the same time, but Fnatic are playing smart. Oh. And you said they take it slow, but they have a mountain to try and sneak this one away from right underneath G2. 21 minutes in, the bounce has been started. You can see Wanda still in the side lane, has the teleport to join the fight. Promise Q puts in the ward, 2,000 HP left on the Baron. Yankos has the flash. He has oh. it, but Reckless secures it! He can't help smite Lucian! They get the kill on Yakos as well! And they're gonna follow it up with a little bit more than Requiem comes out! Caps ignited to his doom! And Fnatic get two, they get the Baron, and they get everything they wanted! Massive play from Fnatic! The confidence to make that kind of a play! Oh! Reckless dodged the petrifying gaze from Perks! He stared the other 80k right in the eyes and said, get the hell back!
to mid lane. Fnatic just continue to outplay G2. Reckless absolutely styled on perks right now. And now with an open base Fnatic, they're going to be looking it? to take an inhibitor. The inhibitor at least is going to go down. Yankos about to respawn. Caps on his way up as well. Back to base, one Stealing away the Razor Beaks. He can't get back to save the inhibitor. So instead he says, I'll take what little I can. Fnatic though are taking chunks out of the heart of G2 right now. They have an 8,000 gold lead and they look like the better team today. Oh, they absolutely do. And they set this up so well. They knew they had the time to try and take this one down. Yankos actually sneaks into the pit, but is unable to secure the bear. And then watch as Reckless just jumps completely over the wall, trying to set up the kill. Caps knows he's dead to the Requiem, so he tries to come back and trade one for one. But then this is the play. Reckless right step. on the fog of war. He steps back oh, here, oh, dodges oh. the petrifying gaze, and that leaves room for Nemesis to jump straight on forward and get another kill. Beautiful stuff from Fnatic, and I thought they wouldn't try. It was still a risk to go for that Baron, but this is the difference from Fnatic. In the past, we've criticized them for not having the confidence to make those kind of plays, for taking their time, for being a little slow, but against G2, they show the same confidence that G2 tried to demonstrate. They take those gambles, they make those plays, and now they are at a 8,000 gold lead, and they're knocking on the doors of these tier two towers. And look at this super stacked minion wave here that Fnatic have built up as well. So many ranged minions, so many melees as well, just sort of soak up the damage from this turn. And G2, they were thinking about forcing and engage, trying to find that five versus four, but they realize Fnatic are too strong, even in a numbers advantage scenario. G2 still don't think they can win the fight. And again, the only small piece of hope for G2 is Wonder. Level 15 on the rise. He's kept even in gold. He has the death cap, but I don't know if it's enough as an engage begins. Yankos jumps in, he's forced out straight away. Down to about 100 HP. The flawless shooter hits onto Caps. Nemesis, though, jumped up with the death mark. Caps jumping around as much as he can. Weber will take him out, but Nemesis falls as well. And now Hill is hanging with the charm with the engage. Promise Q has to flash away. Fnatic can continue to push in. The Realm Wall comes out, but the Requiem is going to follow them to their base. Forced oh. away! <laughs> That's a hell of a lot of damage as Fnatic get the second inhibitor of the game. Maybe even look for the win here, because Caps is still down instead. Hillisang will get the Baron buff on these minions up towards the top side. And inside of the base, it is still a four versus four, but two inhibitors are down in Fnatic. They want more. G2, they've got the health though. They went back to base and they're able to force Fnatic out of their territory. And I think with a performance like this, you have to start asking yourself the question, are G2 still the best team in the league? Because right now, Fnatic look unstoppable. This is six wins in a row so far for them. This would make it lucky number seven. Even with a sub, G2 are not looking of sorts as Fnatic are dumpstering them right now. G2, they tried to go for a last-ditch team fight, but the Jarvan goes in, immediately goes back out. Caps uses his fancy feet, but it's not enough to dodge the barrels from Wonder. And you can see that Wonder as well just Immediately, they just forced to disengage. And the Realm Warp doing a good job of helping the rest of his team getting back to base and healing back up, but the damage is done. Two inhibitors are now down, and you can talk about scaling all you want, but Fnatic are not going to give G2 the room to breathe. Immediately, they're back on the pressure. Oh. They have the rise on Wonder, and they're looking for a kill. Wonder should be able to TP out of this one. Just escapes a, a keg to the back, but we'll be able to get away now. Two super minion waves pushing in for Fnatic. 25 minutes in, they have an 8,000 gold lead. You're sitting at two and a half completed items on Reckless, on Nemesis. Even Whippo has two items under his belt as well. He will have an impact in these fights if he's there. Fnatic are in such a strong position, yet G2 still have to ask themselves the question, how do we approach a team fight? Because with two inhibitors down, G2 more than likely will have to pull the trigger around the top lane or around the Baron that spawns in a minute and a half. And what you have to be thinking is we have to explode a priority target. That means Reckless, Nemesis, or Broxa. Right now, Reckless has the stopwatch, so that is a much weaker option. But in the last fight, they were able to kill Nemesis. If they can single him off one more time, that that's the only chance they have to try and keep themselves alive in this match. Honestly, I think G2 are just trying to maintain as much vision control as they can around the top side of the map so they can go for a potential Baron Steel. And if they can secure it, they can at the very least stall the game out for longer to get to a point where they can rely on their scaling. But again, Fnatic not slowing down. They're sieging on top. They force Perks back. Yankos eats up the culling surfs used as well by Perks. Minion waves pushing in in the other side. Lays the Vanguard's edge comes out. Hillisang with a double charm gets the third as well. As they all just try and dive the tower, but Reckless almost goes down. Promise Q there. Caps fighting against Ripple down towards the bottom side, has to flash away, the death mark will get him, and they get another kill underneath the tower. G2 has somehow turned it around, the Requiem comes out. Is it going to be enough? Caps trying to kill him before oh. he gets up, and it's not enough. And Caps will fall from his Q 
a follow shortly after. It's a double for Broxa and still Fnatica in this fight. Broxa is able to turn it around on the back with the Requiem, but it's still a two versus two Fnatic. They want this turret so desperately. Can Perks and Wonder do anything? Not really, because Wonder has to defend against the super minions on the base. Yeah, they're saying just tanking up the tower shots. Perks, they're trying to turn it back around onto Broxa, but doesn't have the ultimate, so can't really do too much. And Broxa 6 0 5 on this card. This has very much come alive in this game. But there you see the potential team fight power of G2, the team you can never afford to underestimate. Look at Reckless. This time he doesn't dodge out from the Cassio ultimate. He actually flashes straight into it. And while the stopwatch buys time, he's unfortunately underneath the tower. He loses all his HP and he ends up dropping it. It is this ultimate that ends up ultimately keeping the fight even for the two teams. Promise Q can't close the gap quick enough to interrupt and it means that it ends up being a 3-for-3 three three overall. But G2 demonstrating they're getting these items. The scaling is still a thing for them, and Fnatic, they need to show that respect, or G2 can still come out in a team fight. Yeah, but that's the thing. Fnatic now, they have control over the Baron. It's no longer them diving into G2, going underneath the tower. It is G2 coming to them. Can Yankos get the steal? This is it, Yankos. Do or die. If you steal this, you can keep the hopes of G2 alive. Here we go. He's on the blast code. Reckless there as well. He blast codes away. He's giving it up. That's the Baron. Fnatic get it. 28 minutes in. It's the second Baron of the game for them and with it, maybe the hopes of G2 have been quashed. Here's the thing, Yankos can never go for that steal because if he does and he dies and loses the Baron, Fnatic just run into their base, take two inhibitors or even end the game. As it stands, there are two exposed inhibs now that Fnatic have their eyes set on. No turrets to defend G2. And Fnatic, all they have to do is pull the trigger, go right on in and cut down G2 where they stand. When you listen to G2 comms after they beat Fnatic earlier in the split, they said that was personal. Caps dominated on the Zoe. 5-1-2, now 1-6-1 on this Zed. It feels pretty personal from Fnatic this time. 8,000 gold ahead, they're pushing in for these inhibitors. And all five members strong. They're going to try and push G2 back towards their own base. Reckless jumps oh. in, caught out with the petrifying gaze, but no one can catch him. Nemesis down to about half HP immediately. The Requiem used. No one can get up to the back line, and that will be a lot of damage coming out from Boxer, but no one has fallen yet. Fnatic regroup, reset. Nemesis has to back away. Wonder oh. with a lot of damage. Out. Reckless jumped up by Caps. Can he do it? The death mark isn't enough to pop. His former AD carry not quite, but they force Fnatic back once again. The inhibitor line still stands. Fnatic don't have the tank line to walk forward and knock down this inhibitor, G2 are able to play with their backs against the wall and keep their lives up in this match. G2 demonstrating that they can hold the line. All three inhibitors have respawned. A Baron-empowered Fnatic was still not enough to end the game. Wonder is now level 18. Caps is starting to get those items completed, and G2, the longer this game goes, the better their scaling gets, and we get to see if G2 can keep up with the team fighting of Fnatic. Look, we've had questions about G2's team fighting all split long, and now they're playing on hard mode, but you can see how they kite back here, how Wonder is able to just influence this fight so much. Even though he doesn't put down a lot of damage, you can see that the rest of Fnatic don't want to walk through this sort of corridor in the mid, and then Caps almost is able to find Reckless on the back end of this. The Electrocute just barely not able to secure One the kill. One more auto and Ignite, that would have been enough to find the kill. So close between these two teams. And you wouldn't expect that. Fnatic have a, what, an eight, seven and a half thousand gold lead. They, they have the Baron buff. This should be just the game over, but G2 demonstrating that they can hold the line, they can do they can do the impossible. So what have we got in terms of ultimates here? Hillisang has his, but no flash. Does have the Sorellis if he wants to get on the back line. No flash on Reckless either. Caps has the death mark, could try and catch out that enemy AD carry. He's only level 15 though, really needs that 16 for the upgrade on the ultimate. And for Fnatic, in order to threaten the inhibitor, they have to walk up the steps of the base, but there's so much threat here from G2 with the Miasma, the, the threat of a petrifying gaze turnaround, the Yankos going in with the ultimate. This tight area of the map is so difficult for Fnatic to funnel into without having a strong frontline, and that's why we're seeing this standoff at the moment where they just can't walk up to G2. 
Cannon Barrage used Perks, hits the Petro and gets Promise Cube jumps in as well, but it's only Nemesis left called out and Perks already down to half HP. Brox are now pushing forward with the rest of Fnatic. They just want the inhibitor. They can push up towards the top side as well. Caps unable to get on the back line of that fight, and now Fnatic have broken open that inhibitor line once again. Quickness was used by Hillasang though, and G2, they're not gonna fight over it. They give up both their inhibs. Now the problem for G2 is they had three ultimates used in the back end of that fight, so they couldn't go for the re-engage, especially with Broxa still having the Requiem available. So Fnatic, they break through the defense of G2, they secure two inhibitors, and the pressure falls back onto the G2 Esports squad. And we've seen this situation before in this game where Fnatic have two inhibitors. G2 are trying to hold on to their third and final inhib. Last time, though, they had a turret at their side. Now their bottom lane inhibitor is left exposed. Fnatic have the opportunity now within the next two minutes try and break that line. Then they can set up for Baron and try to close this one out. Ladies and gentlemen, we said that this would be the game of the century here in the LEC, and I feel like it is delivering so far. And you guys can get involved in home as well. Voting chat, can G2 turn this game around? It would be one of the biggest comebacks we have seen this split. Spam now, yes or no in Twitch chat. Can G2 turn this game on its head? We said it would deliver Vedius. We said it would deliver Ender. Two teams with 11 EU LCS or LEC titles between them. <laughs> it's close. You the give me this vote five minutes ago, that's 90% <laughs> Fnatic. Right now, though, right on a knife's edge, just like this game. So you can see that the inhibs in the bottom left of your screen will not respawn before the Baron is up. Fnatic will look to secure their third Baron of the game, but before that, they have their eyes set on this bot inhibitor. And right now, Fnatic see that Perks is clearing away minions in the top lane. He's actually going to teleport into a minion just to defend this inhibitor because Fnatic were going to make use of that opening. Now they have the minion line themselves, but the flank is here from Pomescu. It's making it very hard for Fnatic to step up. Caps jumps oh. away, hit a sang with the engage. Trail to the back line, Wonder goes golden. What can Promise Q do? He can't, can't, can't catches them out. Wonder's still there, still alive. Nemesis as well. Reckless has the death mark popping. It's not going to be enough damage, but here comes the Requiem. Wonder still alive. The rest of G2 still alive as well. But maybe the inhibitor will fall pretty soon afterwards. Whipple jumping in. Perks goes golden. Can they take the inhibitor in time? Because Wonder's back up. They force them off. G2 still holding onto their base, but it's a 4v3. Yankos is very low. The next towers are the target for those super minions. Fnatic have the time now to get the inhibitor G2 they're running back to the fountain trying to get some health underneath them so that they could threaten a turnaround but now it is Fnatic with all three inhibitors a Baron buff spawning as well they can go back to base heal up and look to secure that objective to end the game oh my word these fights are so intense I saw Caps and Yankos with blood in their eyes as they both dived on to Reckless but G2 they recognize the situation they have the Baron set they're going for it they have perks on the Cassio he's gotta pull the trigger straight away Hit a sang here Trying to catch up Perks, but can't quite get there. Promise Big. Q gets a three-man knockup. Wonder and Yankos are focusing down. The Baron, 8,000 HP This is on quick. It. There's a fight up towards the other side, though, because Wimmer has the teleport. Caps is trying to keep him alive. There's 3,000 HP on the Baron. Fnatic, can they get in? Can Brock to do the steal Look again? G2 get the Baron. Wimmer forced away as well, but here comes the engagement. Hit a sang locked up. He's dead. They get the shot Nemesis down. is here. And the Kali comes out. Nemesis here as well. Promise Q's gonna fall. Brock has the back. He's oh! 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 He gets the kill. Here comes the Vanguard's edge. They get Brody! the shot down. In. Reckless shot to his eyes, and now Nemesis is as well. We're going to tell him all again. The base, the base. Gans is trying to defend the base. Wonder gets the triple kill. Nemesis onto Yankos. They need to get out. The base. He wants the it. Tenable. He wants it. Nemesis is trying to keep him around. Yankos is so low. The Tenable gets out. Nemesis is trying to get taken out as well. The base is still alive, and G2 survive in this game. This is the greatest game ever. G2 defend the base. The Nexus is still alive. Medic catch a breath. G2 that actually keep this game alive as Fnatic lose four members. The goal doesn't matter. Huh. Oh my god. G2 with the split second call to go to the Baron to start it up and they take it down. And then it's Fnatic just trying to run and trying to force the fight. But watch how Wonder just explodes Hillisang. And then they're going to come back up forward here and destroy Brox as well. And meanwhile, while all this is happening, you can see on your minimap in the bottom right that the super minions are just pushing in. All three are exposed and only Zed is left to defend. So Fnatic is just like, just buy time, just stall. Just don't let them get back to base. But then one 
Wanda makes the split second decision to go, I'm teleporting, guys. Just keep them off me, keep me alive, and I can help us save the game. Oh yeah, Nemesis hops over the wall to trade one more kill for his life. And while that Baron was going down, it was a 1v1 between Caps and Whippo. The Caps was winning, <laughs> and look how the tides have turned, Europe. You guys can turn that around, though. Spam in chat, FNC, if you think Fnatic will take the win. G2, if you think G2 will win it. I, there's no Nexus towers left. There's no inhibitors left. Well, they started to respawn, but the fact that we could still see G2 winning this game from this position is absolutely gobsmacking. Now, importantly, coming into this next fight, if Fnatic want to walk into the base of G2, they have zero flashes on their side. Flash will be so pivotal inside of this team fight because right now, G2 have scaled up. They have the damage. Wonder is so, so strong. You have to be able to single him out and knock him down. But I also... Oh, Caps, oh, Caps, Caps. caps. <laughs> doesn't want to jump onto Hitler saying. But let's also take appreciation of the levels right now. Remember how far behind all of G2 were. 18 for Wonder, 18 for Caps, 18 for Perks. Their builds are nearly fully complete. And meanwhile, for Fnatic, because they haven't been generating a lot of gold, they've just been constantly sieging. They're actually down in levels. They're not even fully complete in terms of itemization yet. And even and the gold difference is only 2k now. Yeah, I mean, because there have been super minions flooding into the base of G2 for the better part of the last 15 minutes here, Vettius. Fnatic, even though they are down in levels, though, they still have incomplete control over this map. They have four Drakes at their side, which means that when the Elder dragon comes up they're going to have control over that area they're going to be able to try and take that one down and get the massive team fight buff this game has been going hell for leather for the last 15 minutes just want to remind everyone here in the studio everyone at home if Fnatic win this they lock their spot in playoffs they are secure if they lose against G2, they still have to fight tomorrow. Caps has a bit of a flank off here as Hillisang's forced away. We'll escape for the moment. It's just resetting the pressure. G2, get some time, get a bit of breathing room. They can actually move out of their base for the first time in a long, long time. And after they take that really good trade, that's the important part. Maybe they can start to take some more control over this map because it will be the Elder Drake to be the next priority, but they know that their base is still exposed and to leave even for a little bit is risky. Ladies and gentlemen in Berlin, the teams need your support more than ever right now. The gold means nothing. The difference between these two teams is so small, but G2 now in the late game with their composition, we said it before, I didn't think they would get to this point, and uh, I thought Fnatic with the lead they had built up would be able to close it out, but one team fight in the top lane that didn't go their way, that one ultimate from Perks that landed onto Reckless, that shut him down, bought enough time for G2 to get to this point. Now both teams facing off once more. The Baron spawns in a minute 30, but it is the inhibitors that are Fnatic's target. Let's see how things play out. All three inhibitors back up. Nemesis takes a bit of chip damage from Caps. Hillisang has the flash engage, has the opportunity to strike. A moment's notice, a single blink of your eye and you might miss it because that is all that these team fights are going to come down to. It's the minuscule moments that Cannon Barrage comes out, the culling to follow. Caps gets a bit of damage in from the side as Boxer chipped out with the Shurukens, but the inhibitor's still alive, and that's all G2 are looking for at the moment. Cannon, uh, the Kegs still connecting as well from Whipper, but he's not as high damage as he would like to be. So you talked about flashes earlier on, and uh, pretty much all the summoner spells are back up, except for Yankos' and Wonders that are just coming up now. Perks up relatively soon. Two ultimates were used there, both Whippo and Heraclus' ulti, but G2 still has them to engage. Here it is. Yankos jumps in. Hillisang forced away. That's his W use. That means he doesn't have that engage tool anymore to jump in, but Yankos didn't have to use the Cataclysm to get it out. Whippo also had to use the flash to get over the wall, so Fnatic sticking around is actually very difficult now to walk in towards the inhibitor. What they want to do is they want to keep the pressure on G2 for the next 20 seconds. That means G2 won't have time to walk back and put Vision here on the Baron. Last time, G2, the only reason they got the Baron was because they made a split-second call and yeah. out-rotated Fnatic. Fnatic will not give them that opportunity this time around. Let's have a look at how we are in terms of builds. Almost a Rabadon's death cap complete on perks. You've got four completed items on caps as well. Look at how big Wonder is in that top lane. Basically full build. Could sell the boots for something else if he wanted, but not going to do that yet. I mean, Wonder has been by far the MVP of this game for G2. Not only did he build a huge lead in the 1v1 up towards the top side, but 
the fact that he's been so valuable in these fights, the decisions he's made in the heat of the moment, and the amount of damage he did to the Baron to even secure it for his team has just been so, so huge. And if this team, if G2 do somehow find this comeback, I feel like it's going to come off the back of Wonder Shoulders. It absolutely will have to. Now, my question for Fnatic is, do they want to wait for this Elder Dragon to spawn? Again, it's very hard for G2 to get vision on Baron, let alone on Baron and the Elder as well. If they wanted to, they could forego starting this one up and send someone to solo it, but they want to start up the Baron. They're going to force Yankos to come into the That's pit. quick. Looking for the steal already. It's gone, though. Fnatic get their second Baron, third Baron of the game. And now G2 need to work out. Do you fight around Elder? Can you leave your base undefended? Perks was in the bottom lane, answering a wave. Teleport comes in here as well as the teams rejoin. It's going to be a fight around the Elder Dragon, you feel, but Fnatic say, no, we have push prior, we have the Baron, we can just push in this midway. I feel like G2 have to go for a fight soon. The death cap has now been completed for Perks. They need to have the confidence to make this play a reality. But it's so risky. You don't want to be the player that makes that mistake that costs your team the game. And Fnatic, they know they have priority, as you said, Medic, and immediately back down towards the Elder. They want everything to be in as much of their favor as possible before they commit to a fight. Fnatic will shred this Baron so quickly. Oh. Four Elemental Drakes. G2, they know they have to look for the team fight before the objective goes down. It's getting low. Yankos has to make a move. 6,000 HP left on the back, and the Realm War coming out as well. They're just going onto the back. They're looking at... Oh, oh my god! A great flag! G2, the perfect team fight! They take it all! They take down three! They even get the chase down as well! The Elder will be in their eyes as Fnatic just die one by one! G2 absolutely destroy Fnatic in the bot lane. River Hillisang is doing what he can to run into the base, but Yankos is on the prowl. It's enough! It's oh, not going to do it! Die. He got the edge of my shield just in time! Hillisang still trying to take down the inhibitor. Can he get it with these bound up minions? The Elder Dragon, not the target, G2 pushing in mid. Hillisang still there on the inhibitor. Is he actually going to be able to do too much here with the ignite? He knocks that comes up. He's just looking for the inhib. Forget about the bot lane. Look at the mid lane. There are two members of G2 pushing in right now. The death timers are at 20 seconds. I don't know if G2 can look to end There's the game no right way, now. There's no way, Vedius. There's no way they do this. They were 8,000 gold behind. They had nothing. 15 minutes in, they were getting demolished. But somehow, once again, G2 find a way to turn the game right back on his head. G2, it was a brilliant flank there with Wonders Realm Warp. He is stepping up to the plate. An absolute carry performance from the G2 top laner. And now it is their turn to take down the Elder Dragon and take control in this game. Beautiful spot there. And uh, I was sitting to myself, how did Promise Q get here? How is he creating the flank? And it was all thanks to Wonder getting onto the back line. Oh, just <laughs> such an exquisite game. A constant back and forth. Extremely exciting fights. And leave it to G2 to see an opening that no one else could have seen. They got the perfect flank onto Fnatic, the perfect team fight. And this all started 20 minutes ago with G2's heroic base defense, just trying to hold on. Remember, there are no turrets left for G2. They had their backs against the wall, and they are now the ones in control. I remember a while ago, I looked up how often a team wins after losing three inhibitors. <laughs> 0.1% of the time. 0.1. And G2, they lost their Nexus Towers. They lost it all. They lost hope in the game, but they kept on fighting. They stood tall and they forced Fnatic back. Fnatic fighting for their place in playoffs. A win here would secure it for them. If they lose here after this performance, that's got to be pretty demoralizing. And they would have to work their way through Splice tomorrow. And now Fnatic. You know, we've talked a lot about G2 because, you know, they've made this comeback happen. They're now at a point where they're, you know, in even footing. And in terms of the straight 5v5, we've seen it. Fnatic can't win anymore. They need to go for some incredible play. And as you guys have already mentioned, there are no towers. All it takes is the commitment from Fnatic to just rush down that, and hit, uh, that Nexus and potentially end the game. There is very little that stands in the way of Fnatic securing the win. And so G2 have to keep their eyes open because Fnatic will always look for that option. They will always keep their eyes out. If you overstep a teleport, if you overstep flashes, 
one small mistake could still cost this game for G2. And it means that even now, the G2 have the gold advantage. They picked themselves up the Elder Dragon. Well, with Baron spawning another time in this game in a minute and a half, G2 still are going to be hesitant to leave their base because, quite honestly, Fnatic could still make a bum rush play and look for the end. We heard people talk about it before the game even started. Match of the week will give you match of the flipping century, and this game has lived up to that. The longest game of the split now as we crest the 46-minute mark. Okay, his elder... No, his Baron. Oh, minute. sorry, Elder Drake just ran out. Just That's ran out there we go, there we go. On the side yes, of yes. G2. And Hibbert, as you can see, uh, the time is down your bottom left screen. Both should be respawning at about the same time. Neither team really been able to leverage that. Full builds pretty much across the board. Perks working on his sixth. It's it's still a very close game. Neither te both teams very has like. You never get to practice this point in the game. You know, when, when, when there's no real objective to play around, when, when everything is exposed, it's all about who makes that play. It is about those clutch moments, those, those crucial decisions that will win you these games because you can't play smart, perfect League of Legends at this point anymore. With Quickstrut not being on the show this weekend, I want to give a little quick stat as a shout out. These two teams now hold both the shortest and the longest game <laughs> of the LEC split. <laughs> It's been an impressive performance. What a game. The middle of the day as well. We've still got two games yeah. to go after this. Yeah, I mean, this we're game... done, Medic, after this. We're done. <laughs> I think we... these players will be done after this one as well. We did not think this game would be approaching the 50-minute mark. Approaching our fourth or fifth Baron. I've lost count, guys, <laughs> honestly. It's the fourth Baron, and now G2, they're going to teleport I in wonder. the fifth Baron. And this, I think, is the sick. I don't know. Either way. It doesn't way. matter because it's already been started up. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Baron going. The double mountains are the target. That's oh, hard. G2 pushing mid. They have their Baron warping. Their Baron warp again. G2 no. are going to the base. The Baron buff, though. They can get the recalls. How many can they stop? G2, you've got to stop them all. You've got to stop them all. They're in the base. G2 are looking for the win. Can they pull it off? The Baron warp. Once again, the red wheel comes out. They play through the next hit. Oh, no. The next hit. No way! The Nexus Towers at the bottom side, G2! Get the first one, but Reckless and Ernest Tank! Get in the back door! Oh, oh my god! god. Let's go! Flip me away! You can do that to them! Fnatic! It looked like they were gonna end the game! G2, they were on the Nexus! We thought that was it, but they made the split-second decision to just rush the Nexus. The inhibitor. It was it was literally respawning. There was like no time in it. That is the best single call I think I have ever seen in League of Legends. Getting the Baron, trying to get out, trying to get back, and then be like, no, screw it. They want to backdoor of us. We can do exactly the same thing to them. You can't practice that. <laughs> These teams in the split second in the late game at the 50 minute mark made the call. G2 saw the opening. They knew they had the inhibitor in mid. They said, stop the bases. We will kill their nexus. But Fnatic saw the same thing. <laughs> they just went straight for the G2 nexus. I, I legit, I'm like, I'm looking at the screen right now. You like. There was what two? Yeah, one two, second? Two seconds at most. Like, like screw the rest of the split. Give me five games of this. <laughs> give me playoffs. Give me Rotterdam. <laughs> if it lives up anywhere oh. close to this. LEC is just the best. For our match of the week, you guys can vote for Brox and Nemesis and Reckless is your key player of the game. Vote for all of them. Who cares? They all did an incredible job. Go out at Sports on Twitter with your pick. I like. What Every one of those game. players stepped up. Nemesis, especially in the early game after Caps demolished him last time. He had an incredible performance. Broxel on the Carthus playing, doing everything in the early game. Reckless with the flipping. I mean, he killed the ball. Nexus, right? <laughs> he got the 50 gold. He got everything that mattered. And I've got to take a breather. You guys, you guys suck. <laughs> that was that was actually <laughs> that was insane. incredible. What a great game. And like, you, you can you can sit there and say like, ah, oh, but Fnatic missed. I, I I think sure there were moments where Reckless made misplays in two of those late game fights. That those were the moments where G2 punished and saved the game. There was one where the ulti came in from uh, Perks and it bought enough time, but like it was just high level team fights. It was crazy gameplay. Everyone stepped up across the board. Fantastic game.
it was it was just next level. Every single fight, every single moment kept me on the edge of my seat, and I'm sure it did our analysts as well. Shocks, we're going to hand it over to you because I my voice is gone. These guys have done enough talking. Shocks, please take it away. Our voices are almost gone as well. There is no way to describe what we just saw. You thought we were kidding with the match of the century? Well, here you freaking go, Fnatic, with the most memorable and most dramatic finish we have ever seen. And to do it over G2 Esports, it's freaking poetic. I, I really uh, have no words. Yeah, I was going to thank you. I mean, I, what are we supposed to analyze? Oh, God. <sighs> Crazy. All right. I, I mean, there's a lot to talk about in that game, but like in in the wake of what is just an incredible moment in League of Legends, that kind of finish, it's it's, it's hard. It's really hard to say anything that I does mean, it justice. Right? We were even talking about to backdoor yes. Ocelot yeah. again from Fnatic. <laughs> so. And what I want to draw the attention to is, before this, we said how important this was for momentum. And then maybe as a G2 fan, you can say, yeah, yeah, momentum, my whatever, because we're still <laughs> in first place. But now you lose this game when you pulled it back from the jaws of defeat in spectacular fashion, and you lose to a base race, to Fnatic, who you're going to meet in playoffs, most likely. Oh. I mean, it's... It's absolutely brutal. And Fnatic look more and more scary. And G2 aren't even the people that I'm most scared for after that game. No. It's anyone who gets them in the in the quarterfinal equivalent matchup. All right, let's uh, let's take a look at the base race if we can, because it I saw stars honestly uh, when it came to that moment, and it looked like G2 had the right idea: peel off the Baron, hold them from backing, and run mid with the Rizal. Oh. Guys, I mean. I I didn't understand what was Reckless doing here. I thought he was trying to recall. And then in the moment he jumped to enemy base, I was like, oh, they're actually going to do a base race, both of them. But G2 didn't have Nexus Tower, so it was easy <laughs> for Avnadi to come into this. Yo. Holy moly. Okay, watch that back and tell me, dear audience, Realm Warp missed the minions. And that's like a two second difference. Oh. Now they still ran ahead, but Realm Warp did not hit those two creeps. And if they had gotten the tower debuff, they might have won the game. Now, there's a million other times where yeah, this was definitely a game of inches, but that is the clearest example where this was a game yeah, you know of what? inches. You know what? I'm going to get back to you because I want to hear from one of the winners. And Laura is standing by with Brox after that. I, I just, please, just talk. Yeah, th thank you, Shaz. Even I am stitchless right now. I was still shaking through the end of the game. You turned it around. It's like, it's really the match of the century. And you, I mean, you managed to bounce back after the worst possible start in Fnatic's history. And you're lucky in playoff with this one. How do you feel right now, Broxa? Especially after beating G2. <laughs> well, after this game, I feel so amazing. Like, you know, the, I think the reaction after the game showed it. I think we went just as crazy as we did when we, you know, won our semifinal at Worlds. Like, it was completely insane. And this game meant a lot to us, not only because we got to playoffs, but we beat G2 and then in this completely insane game. Like, it feels so good. I gotta ask though, how do you go from losing in what was the fastest game in history of Europe to this? Well, to be fair, I don't think this game was the best rep representation of our team either. I think we should have closed it much, much earlier as well. And it ended up being so much more stressful than it should have been. Um, and it feels good knowing that we can now actually, you know, really get a big lead against G2 in the early game, especially after what happened last time. But at the same time, I would highly prefer us closing this one out in 20 minutes rather than stalling it out and all of us having to, to shake in our pants and stay like this. It's nice that you mention it because you could have lost this one going through the end of the game. What were you feeling when you saw that G2 were bouncing back on you? Um, well, honestly, it started getting a little nerve-wracking uh, towards the, the last 5-10 minutes because even before that, we, we didn't really find an opening to end the game, but we were still in you know, with a really big lead and especially I was in a, such a strong position this whole game. Uh, I was really fed, dealing so much damage with my R button and just generally we were in such a good spot until the last 5-10 minutes where, where they actually all had full items and that big early game lead we got ourselves didn't really matter anymore. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the fans being loud today. Um, let's try something here. If you could talk to your old self when you had doubts earlier this split, what would you say? I would say that even though <laughs> even though things were looking really rough and even though it was really depressing, really frustrating at times, uh, to just keep believing, keep the hope up, stay positive, okay. and just you know 
like first and foremost, just don't lose, co lose confidence and believe in this team. Um, and I know that deep inside, I always had the hope. Yeah. I think we all did, and that's also part of why we, we did manage to turn this around. Oh. Thank you for staying focused through all of this. They're being really loud today, and they should be, because Vitality will be playing soon. But first, let's send it back to Shucks.